All right, everyone, thank you for joining and welcome to migrating Cassandra workloads to Cloud Bigtable. Uh, brief introductions. My name is Kristen O'Leary. I'm a developer relations engineer and I focus on uh, Bigtable client libraries. And I'm Billy Jacobson. I'm also a developer relations engineer focusing on Cloud Bigtable sample code and tutorials. So Kristen's going to kick things off in this presentation by talking about why you might want to migrate to Bigtable from Cassandra and different application structures you might have that are fairly common in Cassandra. Then with all those applications and potential um, applications there, she's going to walk you through how you would migrate each of those to um, Bigtable. Then once that's done, I'm going to walk you through all the code and sample resources we have available to make that process as easy as possible. So Kristen, why don't you kick things off? Thanks, Billy. Yeah, so we're going to start with reasons why you may want to migrate from Cassandra to Bigtable. So we're going to focus on just two different examples. The first is maybe you're currently struggling to maintain availability, uh, durability, and performance of your current existing distributed database. So some more examples include maybe you're struggling with stability at scale, or maybe there's just too much operational load on your SREs, or you're just generally dealing with overhead of managing replication, repair, and things like garbage collection. Um, a second point could be you may want to move up the tech stack and spend less time and money on things like managing uh, the different complexities of a distributed database. So examples here include, you know, maybe you want to reduce the total cost of operation of your infrastructure and do things that were different than before and things that weren't possible before. So now we're going to walk into some technical steps. Um, so of course, step zero here is you need to plan for your migration. Um, so before you dive into a migration from Cassandra to Bigtable, it's really important to deep dive into Cassandra use cases and gain a better understanding of Cloud Bigtable and how they're the same and how they're different. Um, you should do things like map concepts, schemas, and queries um, from Cassandra to Cloud Bigtable. Um, a quick tip, um, Cassandra primary key you can look at as the same as equal as a Bigtable row key. That's a great starting assumption. Billy's going to talk about that later. Um, but that's a great place to start when you're looking and thinking about this type of migration. Next, we're going to walk through um, an example of a migration flow. Um, so step one, uh, you can look into doing dual writes. So you're currently obviously writing into your Cassandra database. Now you want to try and write both into Cassandra and Bigtable. So any new data will go into both databases. Step two. Now that you have new data in Cloud Bigtable, you want to copy over the old data from Cassandra into it. So you want to do copying of existing data from Cassandra into Cloud Bigtable. Step three, optionally, you can compare between the two. So make sure that your data is consistent between Cassandra and Bigtable. Step four, um, redirect your read. So we're writing into Bigtable, and now that the data should be equivalent to what we had in the Cassandra database, we can also start reading into Bigtable. So redirect your reads from Cassandra to Cloud Bigtable. Step five, uh, stop your dual write. So now we're basically using Bigtable to read and to write. No need to dual write anymore, so you can turn off the writing into your Cassandra database and only focus on Bigtable. And step six, now you're done, and you can decommission Cassandra. Okay, so next up is migration paths. We're going to talk through four different migration paths that you may encounter and how to proceed with them. So here are some examples of common Cassandra migration paths, um, and they each have different migration strategies. Again, we'll look at them more in detail on each slide. Um, we're going to start with batch load global serve. So you may have an application where you load data into one region, and then um, you may want to replicate the data out to other serving regions. So in this example, the first thing we would want to do is rewrite our batch job to support Bigtable. So this job that does all of the writing, you now want to support Bigtable as well as Cassandra. Um, secondly, you want to rewrite your API to support Bigtable. So instead of just, you know, writing to Cassandra, now we're writing to Bigtable, and now we want to start changing the API to do things like read as well. Um, step three, you want to run your batch jobs in parallel to run to load the data both into Cassandra and Bigtable. And then finally, once you're done um, and once you feel that data is equivalent, you can release to switch your API layer from Cassandra to Bigtable entirely. 
So you'll see here in the diagram, first we had just the uh, Cassandra instance, and now we're writing to Bigtable as well to serve the end users. So next up is when downtime is acceptable. So this is another common um, application instance where your application may be able to accept some downtime and have a maintenance window. So um, this is an example of how you can do the migration during that time. So first up, you want to stop writing to Cassandra during your migration window. And then you just want to do a big batch copy from Cassandra to Bigtable. And so once you've done that, the data should be equivalent um, and you can optionally compare to ensure that your data is correct. Um, and then switch over your serving layer entirely to Bigtable. So now your API will talk to Bigtable instead. And then you want to decommission Cassandra. So you can see here in the diagram, we've now switched over the API layer to talk to Bigtable as well. Next is online with time to live. So this is another common workload where let's say you have something like a cache or user sessions where you have data that eventually will expire. Um, so we'll use that to our benefit here so that first up, of course, we want to rewrite our code again so that we're rewriting, we're writing data into both Cassandra and Bigtable. So now we're getting all of our new data into Bigtable as well. And then you want to wait until your time to live expires. So once your data that was only in Cassandra has expired, the two databases should be equivalent. Um, again, you can do things like do asynchronous callbacks to verify that the data is consistent between the two. And then finally, you can decommission Cassandra. So again, as you see in the diagram, we've written to both Cassandra and Bigtable, and then eventually, due to the time to live, both sets will become equivalent. And last but not least, we have online with persistent data. Um, this is a workload that's user-facing, semi-transactional, can't accept any type of downtime. So how do we do work in that case? Um, so you want to, again, rewrite your API layer to read and write to both systems, and then ensure there's managed consistency in the API layer just in case something goes down. Um, you want to batch copy and backfill your data into Bigtable because, again, you can't accept any downtime. Um, and then you want to do asynchronous callbacks between the two. Again, I know we keep saying this to make sure that your data is consistent and equivalent. And then once you're satisfied with the consistency of your data, you can shut down Cassandra. All right, so we've talked about a lot of different um, situations and examples. Now, Billy is going to take us through some of the actual code that you will use if you want to do a migration from Cassandra to Bigtable. Yeah, thank you so much, Kristen. Um, the, we've got a lot of starting points from there. So <clears throat> from those paths you are going to take, there are two major aspects to your migration, migrating your queries and doing your batch data migration. So let's first look at migrating queries. And if you're using Cassandra or any kind of database, you have a lot of queries you're going to want to migrate. So you're managing your tables with queries, any kinds of garbage collection with queries, you're writing your data, you're reading data, and you might also have analysts that need to perform table-wide analytics and are more comfortable with SQL than um, some of the programming languages that we have client libraries for. So I'm gonna walk you through a bunch of examples and they are all available later in this code lab, um, Cloud Big Table for Cassandra users. You can learn the basics of migrating a lot of these queries and all the code that's in these slides will be available there. So don't feel like you need to pause the video to figure out what the code is. You can find the link later. So let's look at an example database just to make things a little bit more concrete through these examples. So we're storing um, data about mobile devices in a time series. So we have information about their cellular plan, how much data each phone has, um, if it's connected to the Wi-Fi, connected to a cell tower, and which operating system it's on. And you might have a lot more data in here. Um, we also are storing the device type, a device ID, and the date that that data is stored on. And we could store that in the row, but we've also we've upgraded it into our row key because this is where we are doing our queries from. This is very similar to our Cassandra primary key. So all your queries for Bigtable are going to be based on your row key. Kristen mentioned earlier, your primary key can be pretty much translated into your row key by just concatenating the important parts of it. So here we have device type, device ID, and date. And the big, big table queries are based on row gets, based on the row key, and row range scans, based on the row keys as well. So these features are really going to determine which queries are going to be the most performant. 
So to get started with Bigtable, you're probably going to use our command line utility, which is similar to the Cassandra shell, and this is called the CBT tool. Here I'm showing you how to create a table with, uh, with the CBT tool. And we, and you'll notice with Cassandra, you're used to defining all the columns in advance, defining your primary key, and we don't do that in Bigtable. We just define the table name and any column families. Uh, and you can define uh, your garbage collection rules at the column family level. So the CBT tool is great for doing creating your tables, getting everything set up, but you can also use it for reading and writing data, deleting data, managing your app profiles, managing your garbage collection. And if you have any scripts for database automation that you have set up, maybe using Cassandra Shell or anything like that, the CBT tool is a great way to just swap those out um, if you're switching over to Bigtable. But for your application, you're probably going to want to use one of our client libraries. We have our client libraries available in eight languages uh, or in eight programming languages, um, Go, Java, Python, uh, Node.js, just to name a few. And we have documented all the different ways you're probably going to want to use um, Bigtable there. So we're going to just look at the Java client, um, but again, all those all those other client libraries will be well documented with uh, examples similar to these. So here for writing data, we in Cassandra, you're used to doing an insert, you're gonna specify the columns and their values, where at Bigtable, we do writes as mutations. So we'll take our row key and create a mutation from that where we set a cell's value. So the cells are an intersection of the row key, the column family and column and then we provide a value for it. And you're, you'll also note here we're providing a timestamp. Bigtable will let you store multiple versions of a value or multiple values at different versions in a cell, and you can use that as part of your time series um, storage strategy. Um, and with garbage collection, you can determine how many versions are kept or how old those versions are. So one of the parts of your migration is going to be dual rights, potentially. So to do that, you're gonna pick your client library of choice and then alongside any of your insertions, you're going to create a mutation to match that alongside of it. So now let's look at two select statements. Here we're just selecting one row because we're selecting on all the parts of the primary keywords. So we've got the device type, the device ID, and a date. And in Bigtable, we're just going to translate that into a row key by concatenating all that information. And here we're using a um, the pound symbol to separate each each um, each piece of information, but you can really use any symbol you want. So we take our row key and then we just perform again, and you can do whatever you want with the data from there. So if you wanted to verify that your data had been migrated correctly, you could query Cassandra and Bigtable at the same time, wrap those in an asynchronous callback block, and then log any deviations that you get until everything is matching or you've sorted out any of those errors. So you can also do this for multiple rows. Here we're scanning for all the um, dates or all the dates after 2019 or kind of just 2020 at this point um, for a specific phone. So with Bigtable, we can do a prefix scan for that. Um, we're going to, instead of doing the full row key, we just take part of the row key. So we're taking the device type phone and the device ID, which is 4C, 41, whatever it is, and then we're just taking the year because all the data for that device and all the data for the device that's in 2020 will have that as its prefix for their scan. So we pass that prefix to the scan and then we can get all the rows for that. And you can use this in multiple ways. So let's say you wanna get all the data for 2020 and 2019, you could do two prefix scans and do them at, or you could pass, you could create a scan which is two prefixes at once and get all that data back at once. And you kind of perform queries in creative ways to do that, but if you're gonna have a little bit more nuance in your queries than what the row key can provide, maybe just for one-off queries, you're trying to learn um, new things about your data, you're gonna use filters. And this is very similar to allow filtering in Cassandra. So we have timestamp filtering, value filtering, you could do row key regexes if part of the row key is gonna help you out. But again, like Cassandra with allow filtering, you don't want to let it just do full table scans. So we recommend that you have a range as part of that query or do a prefix scan just to limit 
um, how much data you're going to be scanning with that filter. And then a final option for migrating your queries to Bigtable is to use Bigtable as an external data source on a BigQuery. And this is just easy. This is really easy to do. You just set up a configuration file to translate some of your data into BigQuery, and then you can do table-wide analytics on it with a SQL-like language. So this is a lot more performant for your table-wide analytics. Um, you can save some of the data after you query it to BigQuery to hand that to an analyst if they just want to run a lot of queries on the same set of data. Or we actually see a lot of customers write um, data to Bigtable and BigQuery, and they use them um, they use the data warehousing features of BigQuery and the um, speed and QPS that Bigtable provides as a database. So that's all about how to migrate your queries, but most of the scenarios that Kristen went through include a batch data migration. And we know this can be intimidating. You have a lot of data. You don't want to lose it. You want to make sure it all stays in sync. So we've made it super easy with our bulk load tool. This is going to run on Cloud Dataflow, our managed and hosted Apache Beam Runner. It does an automatic schema conversion for you. It'll copy the data, and there's no coding needed. You'll just pass in your configuration file with the tables, key spaces, and server information, and then you can run it with the command line. Um, and what's great is this is all open source. So if you want to take our um, our bulk load tool and make it work for some more of your specific requirements, feel free to do that. And Apache Beam, uh, and on Apache Beam, we have the Cassandra IO, Bigtable IO, and even BigQuery IO connectors. So you can write any sort of pipelines that connect these three to make whatever, um, to make whatever data flow is going to work best for you. So now you understand why you might want to migrate, how to determine the path to get from Cassandra to Bigtable. You can do your dual rights, data verifications, and your batch data migration. So what are you going to do next? If you're an existing customer, we recommend that you connect with one of your account teams to get started. They'll help connect you to a lot of the resources we have. Um, but if you're not, you can check out some of these links we've got. Um, we, here's a link to the code lab I mentioned earlier, so you can get started on seeing how your queries are going to migrate. And you can even check out a talk from Cloud Next 2019 where Spotify discusses how they migrated from Cassandra to Bigtable using a lot of the techniques and tools from this talk. Thank you so much for attending and happy migrations. <laughs>